Welcome to the BTM channel's 28th short for space exploration, science, and technology. Just five days before SpaceX's historic first commercial manned spaceflight on May 30th of 2020, Virgin Orbit, the satellite launching subsidiary of commercial spacecraft company Virgin Galactic, attempted to fire the Launcher 1 rocket into orbit from its Boeing 747 carrier aircraft just off the coast of Southern California. Unfortunately, the rocket's engine developed an anomaly shortly after release, and the mission was terminated. After a post-mortem data analysis, Virgin Orbit was able to determine the source of the failure. On July 22, 2020, CEO Dan Hart revealed the details during his keynote speech at the Space Generation Advisory Council's Space Gen United Online Congress. The failed launch came just two months after Virgin Orbit's government contracting unit, Vox Space, won a three-launch contract from the U.S. Space Force for $35 million. Given that the initial test launch had to be aborted, it is not clear when Virgin Orbit or Vox Space will be able to start launching missions for the Space Force or other customers on its manifest. Hart opened his keynote with background on Virgin Orbit's business model and projected lift capabilities. We're a flexible, uh, uh, very capable uh, and dedicated system for the small satellite revolution that's going on. And so we're focused on satellites weighing up to about 300 kilograms to sun synchronous or 500 to um, uh, uh, lower inclination uh, equatorial type orbits. Uh, we have incredible flexibility because as Curtis said, we fly up, our first stage is a 747, the most reusable first stage uh, in the world. A workhorse that's been around uh, for a long time, uh, very well characterized, but converted to carry a rocket. And you can see the rocket under the wing. Um, we can fly from almost any place in the world, um, fly to any inclination. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and the, the holy grail in, in space launch operation ever since a group of aerospace engineers went to Cape Canaveral to launch has always been, how do we operate like an airplane? Why does it take so long and why is it complex to get uh, uh, through our processing and get to space? And well, we've cracked that code basically by using an airplane. And so that's our system. It's a two-stage rocket, uh, LOX kerosene. Uh, we build uh, almost all of it in this building. Uh, here in Southern California, uh, the rocket comes off of the 747. Once we're in position, pilot hits a switch, drops the rocket. The rocket detects that it has left the airplane, um, starts its engine at the right time, and targets an orbit that's pre-programmed and delivers a, a spacecraft. Next chart. The key here, as I said, was, first of all, highly reliable, highly reusable first stage, the 747. We get altitude and velocity from the 747 as well as flexibility. So, you know, we're at 35,000 feet when the game starts for the rocket. Um, and we're at uh, a velocity, uh, you know, that's, that's not that far from Mach 1 when we even start. It allows us to make a very simple rocket. It's, as I said, LOX kerosene, composite structure, uh, simple, robust, proven. And then we have very advanced manufacturing processes here. Uh, we, the state of the art and composite uh, tankage and unpressurized structure, additive manufacturing for uh, engine and, and the key structures in, in, the, um, in the vehicle, uh, very small, very lightweight avionics and very, very clever guidance navigation and control uh, uh, algorithms and systems. So all comes together for an affordable, very flexible system. Virgin was careful to downplay expectations of the Launcher 1 test space flight. It was hoped that the rocket would reach space, but there was little expectation that even in the best case that it would reach the orbit required for commercial launches. Virgin gave a pre-launch odds of success to be at best 50%. The rocket contained a payload, but the company did not release details about it. If the rocket had reached the test orbit, it would have released the test payload and take data, deorbiting shortly thereafter. If the mission had gone perfectly, the Launcher 1 rocket would have refired its engine and test its ability to move to a different orbit. This ability is an important selling point for multi-satellite missions. 
The Launcher 1 rocket's small payload capacity limits Virgin Orbit to launches from microsats, unlike SpaceX's and the United Launch Alliance's rockets, which can lift one to two orders of magnitude more in freight depending on the orbit height required. The root of Virgin Orbit's technical challenge in air launches is to make it cheap enough to be appealing compared to fixed launch complex users like SpaceX, the United Launch Alliance, Ariana Space, and RKK Energia, all of whom can offer competitive pricing but offering shared launch billets. More to the point, Northrop Grumman can air launch its proven reliable Pegasus XL rocket for about $60 million. Hart reviewed some of the specific technical challenges in air launches while answering questions after his keynote. Well, I would say that the, um, the hard part is developing the aircraft modifications. You know, once you have it, then, then it's pretty straightforward because a 747 operates very well and easily and we, it's so well characterized. Um, but it was not easy making the modifications uh, for put a big pylon on the wing and modify the wing and all the, excuse me, the electronics and cabling and, and plumbing and pressurization and, and, and all of that uh, was, was complex. I mean, we had to develop two vehicles. Um, so that, would, that, that was the hard part. Um, you know, it's, it's really a pretty simple system. I mean, there are three hooks that hold the rocket. Um, and we've now, you know, having now gone through the flight test program, um, uh, you know, we've, we've sort of worked through uh, the, the, the development and verified it. So, you know, it's a very reliable system. And again, the whole point of the system we created was to make it as simple as possible. So three hooks with a hydraulic um, redundant system and a switch uh, you know, to arm and, and release the rocket is pretty straightforward. You know, and by the way, we, we operate and launch the rocket with four people on the airplane. So there's two pilots and two launch engineers. You know, again, the development of the software, the hardware to make that happen was, was not easy. Uh, but getting through countdown and getting to first flight on our first attempt really proved out a lot of hard work, a lot of hard rehearsals paid off. As it did during its dry run in April, Virgin Orbit's modified Boeing 747 began its launch pattern off of San Nicolas Island, California. The carrier then went into a 25 degree climb at 35,000 feet. At T minus zero seconds, the Launcher 1 separated from the carrier and lit its Newton 3 engine. At this point, Launcher 1 should have ascended into low Earth orbit. Hart describes what actually happened. Recently, we did our first demo launch uh, it was an incredibly exciting day. It was a day of uh, extreme joy and exuberation and a bit of disappointment, which frankly in this, in this business often happens on first flights. Uh, so that's, to me, this picture it really tells the story of this system and, and, and of that day. Uh, we had a, a beautiful day, a beautiful countdown really proud of the team and that the first time on a brand new system, we went to countdown and launch. We succeeded in, in getting through our, our countdown and our launch uh, seamlessly, uh, really flawlessly and, and dropped the rocket. The moments after dropping the rocket and in that data, we verified our in, entire uh, aer aerodynamic database as, as we dropped the rocket off the airplane. Uh, we verified our control algorithms as our fins worked really hard to control the rocket through the turbulent flow around the airplane and into uh, uh, the, the, the steady state flow as, as the rocket dropped uh, through the air for about four or five seconds. The rocket detected that it was time to start the engine and it went through its pressurization and, and uh, startup routine started the engine and uh, started to, and lifted up its nose and uh, uh, pulled up pitch and, and traveled along our trajectory to target uh, the orbit. Uh, so we were pretty stoked at that point that we had at that moment proven all of the new aspects of air launch. Uh, on a first flight, on any flight in space flight, data is so critical. And I can't emphasize the importance to you enough of uh, 
as you work on your space flight programs in the, in the future, make sure you've got plenty of data. We had four ground stations tracking us and I'm really glad we did. Uh, so we've done a, a, an investigation uh, as we do in this business uh, and we're, we've, we've identified what we need to fix. Unfortunately, and to our disappointment, we had a, we had a component break in our engine system. It was a, a, a high pressure feed line uh, and um, lock stopped going into the engine and, and uh, our, our, our flight was terminated. And so we, were, we left both incredibly excited, incredibly thrilled, and a bit disappointed that we didn't get to orbit. Virgin Orbit has a seven launch manifest, including the three from the U.S. Space Force. The second launch is for NASA's Alana 20 Science Microsat mission that will send 10 CubeSats into orbit. Three more launches are planned, but not scheduled. One for GOM Space, one for Sky and Space Global, and one for Cloud Constellation. The U.S. Space Force is expected to use the first of its three rockets as a technology demonstrator. Virgin Orbit's latest filing with the U.S. Federal Communications Commission promises that their second launch attempt will occur between September of 2020 and February of 2021. That's a pretty broad window, so let's see what Hart has to say about it. Um. So we've got our, our rocket, our next rocket in final integration right now. Uh, should be leaving the factory in the next few weeks and heading into launch processing while we make some modifications to the engine to strengthen up those parts. And we'll be uh, targeting our next flight uh, before the end of the year. Um, so uh, a really exciting time for us. Uh, you know, as I tell my team, there are two hardest words in the English language, uh, space flight and startup, and you put them together and uh, it's both exciting and, uh, and long, hard hours of a team pulling together and, and making new capabilities uh, a reality. Um, so that's a little bit about um, our uh, you know, we have a, a bunch of customers in the commercial sector uh, who we're working very closely with in uh, our NASA will be uh, a customer for us coming uh, up very soon and, and working across the globe, really, with different countries uh, and different governments uh, to help uh, both economically and, and, and government capabilities. What do you think about Virgin Orbit's prospects as an air launch provider and the likelihood of whether it can execute at a much lower cost than Northrop Grumman? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this third briefing on Virgin's Launcher One rocket. If so, click the like button. Not a subscriber yet? Clicking the subscribe button and the bell notification icon will help both our YouTube standing and keep you informed when new episodes are released. Links to our previous episodes can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. Make sure you follow our Twitter account, where all new episodes are announced. And finally, join us on our Facebook page, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.